Hi there. Um, my name is Brad Newman. I'm here with my family uh, of four here. My wife, Jamie, my two boys, Tyler in the back and Trevor in the front. Um, I was going to tell my story, uh, my transplant story um, that I've experienced over the last uh, almost 12 months now. Um, I was the recipient of a kidney and a pancreas in July of last year. And uh, it was just something that kind of took our family by storm, um, but has been much longer than than just you know the last 12 months. Um, it started uh, when I was 20, about 21, 22 years old when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And, and that pretty much took over my life at that point. It was, it was a, quite a big lifestyle change. And uh, it affected um, everyone around me pretty much. Um, things had to change and uh, I had to live my life differently. But I was able to do so and um, thought that I took care of myself pretty well um, over the next uh, almost 25 years. Um, however, uh, diabetes is a, is a very destructive um, condition and uh, it's something that did uh, cause damage to my kidneys and unfortunately I did start suffering from, from kidney disease and uh, at that point um, I mean, I knew most of my life uh, that uh, the time would come that I would have to have a, a, a kidney transplant and have to receive a new organ uh, because, because of what the diabetes does. Um, and yes, a couple of years ago, I did start showing the signs of kidney failure um, through kidney biopsies and, and just various uh, testing um, and knew I was on that path. and. Uh, knew that it was probably going to happen within the next, you know, three, four, five years um, at that point. Um, late last, uh, or, sorry, early last year, we, we took a family vacation to Europe and spent almost one month there. And uh, we did, we all did very well. We had a full uh, schedule and we just were nonstop for those, uh, those four months. And, and I did well. I, I, felt like I had energy, but uh, when we returned, uh, things kind of changed, and I, I felt really weak at times, um, just tired all the time, and uh, didn't have much energy to do anything. Um, it was at that point that my nephrologist, uh, he came to us and said, you know, we need to start thinking about organ don or donation, or sorry, transplant. Um, which involves donation, obviously. But um, so we got worked up. I got worked up for the list and uh, was uh, put on that list in uh, November of 2016. And uh, at that point, it was just the waiting game. Um, we did have some hiccups and some speed bumps to take care of uh, with the insurance, but was able to to get everything um, lined up and. We continued to wait. Uh, fortunately, for a kidney and a pancreas uh, list, uh, it, it's a kind of a short list compared to just the kidney list. And I was fortunate to only have to wait six months. Um, I was not. Uh, I did not need to go on dialysis, which is another blessing. And that's something that that could have been a, a big uh, disruption in in our lives and scheduling and, and work and everything. But I was able to avoid that. And in July of last year, I was called, and uh, they had found a donor for me, um, both for the kidney and the pancreas. And I went in uh, early that morning, uh, July 3rd. And um, on July 4th, uh, I was uh, taken into the operating room for a seven-hour surgery. and. It was all such a rush, it was all such a whirlwind that I didn't have a whole lot of time to, to, to think and to um, ponder on what was happening. Um, I just went with everything, went with everything people told me. I just followed directions and uh, not really knowing. Um, my wife uh, has worked in the organ, organ donation field for about 14 years and I was lucky to have her and to be able to explain all the intricacies and all the, the steps and things that were going to happen. And so we were prepared and I was prepared and I knew exactly what was going to happen um, from step one and beyond. And 
Um, unlike most people, they probably have to have to be taught and, and things have to have to be explained to them. Well, I, I had everything in my head. I knew what was going to happen. If I didn't, I would ask her and she, she knew what was going on, what was going on. So it was a, a little bit, like I said, a whirlwind, um, but um, once I did receive the, the transplant um, and was in the hospital, um, I was there for 28 days. I had plenty of time to think and plenty of time to, to ponder what was going on. And uh, between those times of, of, of pain and uh, watching TV and, and getting up and walking around the floor, uh, I, you know, got to think and think thoughts of, of uh, you know, my, my donor and uh, what had happened and, and things that had disrupted um, my donor's family and my donor's life uh, in order for, for mine to continue and to be, uh, to be blessed and to be uh, more ful fulfilling and thoughts of, of, you know, insecurity, thoughts of, um, I'm not, I'm not worthy of this, you know, did, did creep in, but, but I was very grateful and I will be eternally grateful for, for my donor, for his family, and he will always be our hero in, in our family. And we are, uh, we are friends with his parents and we are friends with with the associates that he had and and we're grateful for that and I think we our lives have all changed my little family here um, and we all uh, are more aware of of things like this that can that can happen and that can change um, families and and I think my boys also have had their eyes opened to um, to how life can can be and, and things that can um, change at just the snap of a finger and and we're all grateful and and happy that um, organ donation has come to where it is and medicine and doctors and and surger, surgical procedures are just so so advanced that that uh, things like this can happen and I just want to uh, tell everybody out there to donate life, that it's important and it's, it's very easy to, um, to just not think and, and, and disregard it, but it's also very easy to just say yes, say yes to organ donation and that's my story and I hope you enjoy it.